Most of us do what we can to help the environment. We use less electricity, we recycle more, we drive less, or maybe we even put solar panels on our roof. All of these are important things we can do to minimise our footprint. The problem is, they can feel like a drop in the bucket. Does switching off the light really make a difference when the coal-fired power plant's going to be running anyway? These things probably do help a little bit. According to research by Founders Pledge, all of these things have an influence on CO2 emissions. Still, the question hints at something important. For us to tackle climate change, we need more than a few lights switched off. We need a systemic change to solve a complex global problem like this. Now that raises a whole new problem. What can people like you and I do to help create the systemic change we need? I'm an academic. I don't work directly on climate change, but I still want to do what I can to tackle it. It's easy to feel like this problem's just too big to change. Sure, we can vote or send letters to parliament, but those still don't feel like they'd move the needle. The good news is that some charities have been shown to actually move that needle. Remember all those personal actions that you and I do to try to fight climate change? Well, according to the same report from Founders Pledge, giving $1,000 to the world's most effective climate charities is more effective than doing all of those things combined. How is that even possible? The reason is they have a track record of doing work that is high leverage, evidence-based and neglected. When we try to improve the environment, this isn't the norm. We all understand the impact that can happen by working at scale rather than at an individual level. If it were a similar amount of effort to persuade a single voter of climate change as it were a president, we can easily see it's more impactful to persuade the president. Similarly, if back in the 1990s it cost a similar amount to install a thousand solar cells as it did to do research on how to make all new cells more efficient, then we can all see how technological advancement might have long-term cascading effects. This is what we mean by high leverage. By finding the biggest levers, like technologies or major governments, our top charities can get much more bang for your buck. But not all high leverage interventions are likely to be that effective. The United Nations is obviously a massive lever, but some of the UN's recommendations are not really likely to move the needle. For example, the UN suggests we buy local or organic food. My wife and I used to do this, walking to the farmer's markets, paying triple what we would have at Woolies. But it was the right thing to do, right? Well, according to graphs like these from Our World and Data, transport only accounts for a tiny fraction of the carbon emissions from food. For animal products like beef, it's less than 1% of the emissions. Overall, across all food in the European Union, it's less than 6%. I know some people who eat a steak a week. They'd have to buy local for over a year for it to be as effective as just halving the size of the steak or having an impossible burger. Focusing recommendations on eat local is a bit of a band-aid for the climate's bullet wound. In contrast, our top charities have been chosen because they've been independently evaluated to make major positive changes towards climate change. For example, policymakers themselves credited our partners as playing a crucial role in major policy successes over the last few decades, like getting over $300 billion directed towards climate change from the Inflation Reduction Act. Now, there are lots of great environmental charities doing high leverage, effective work like this. But it's important to also focus donations on charities that are neglected because we can have more impact by not just following the crowd. As an example, the Bezos Earth Fund has committed two billion US dollars towards conserving forests and oceans. A thousand dollars from me to do the same thing might be a bit of a drop in the bucket. On the other hand, some approaches to tackling climate change are otherwise really neglected. For example, we all know about CO2 emissions, but for a long time, no one was really talking about methane. Methane has accounted for nearly 45% of our global warming thus far. So over 20 years, a tonne of methane is 80 times worse than a tonne of CO2. Yet it's been relatively neglected in the conversation. One of our partner charities, the Clean Air Task Force, was instrumental in helping to get methane on the global policy agenda. For organisations like that, an extra thousand dollars can go a long way. These organisations are constrained by not attracting enough funding. With more, they can do more. They hire more people, keep the people they have, or expand what's worked into new issues or new locations. We want donations to go where they're needed most. So when we make grants, we find the programs that are neglected and need more funding. Making these decisions is really hard though, and we don't do it all ourselves. We're working alongside two evaluation partners to make these decisions, Giving Green and Founders Pledge. Both organisations perform rigorous research to find out what works best. 
and we consult both of them to see where your dollar can go the furthest. By consulting with two trusted evaluation partners, we can find the best opportunities for Australian donors to maximise their impact so that they can tackle climate change by giving with confidence. When you donate to our fund, your donation is tax deductible. The Australian regulations say that you, as a donor, can't say where we, as the charity, should send your money. Instead, every quarter we consult with Giving Green and Founders Pledge to see where they think your donation could go the furthest. They're continually evaluating climate charities based on how much impact they're likely to have and which has room for more funding. We then provide grants to those charities so your dollar goes as far as it can. I'm so grateful to live here in Australia. We are the lucky country, punching above our weight on GDP and quality of life. But we also punch above our weight on emissions. Each of us contributes more to climate change than the average American. Now, I want to do whatever I can to reduce my carbon footprint. I'm still going to drive less, turn off the lights, and we'll still avoid food that's flown around the world. But I'm so happy I can now support the world's most effective climate charities and really make a dent in the problem. Together, we can get to net zero and beyond. I hope you'll join us in taking the next steps.